I'm very pleased to introduce you to our speaker on the topic of social emotional learning, the power of picture books, Anjali Casey. Anjali is a resource teacher at Quebec City's largest English elementary school, St. Vincent Elementary, which is in the heart of the St. Foy neighborhood. She works primarily with Cycle One students and teachers, but is a tremendous resource for her entire school. Ms. Casey has always loved children's literature and understands how the right book in the right hands at the right moment is essential for nurturing our young readers' literacy skills and their social emotional health. She actively seeks out picture books to use in her daily practice. Azalee will be accepting questions in a question period at the end of her presentation. Thank you and please welcome Anjali. Thank you, Chelsea, for the beautiful introduction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, this uh, session. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I hope uh, this session will turn out well and you can grasp, get something out of it to, that, to use in uh, your daily uh, um, library. Um, so Chelsea did mention I'm a lover of picture books. I, I am passionate about teaching and learning uh, and being with children. Um, I have very soon in my career uh, witnessed the impact of picture books on children and how picture books can be a, a very useful tool to keep, teach all concepts. So uh, early on, uh, I started discovering all those beautiful books out there and I made it part of my daily practice. Um, in my career, I soon uh, realized that social and, um, social and emotional learning was a key feature in a student's development. Um, so I did uh, start to addressing these needs um, in a very um, targeted way. And, uh, and I found it very interesting to combine the read alouds and the use of picture books to help with these social, social emotional learning gaps, or I really came to make it a priority. So um, just to address the, the growth mindset, anxieties, low self-esteem, and, and many, many other things that children go through. This is why uh, today I'm presenting this workshop. I hope it's going to help you. Um, remember that uh, students are are develop, developing at their own pace and uh, we're there to facilitate them. Um, I always questioned how to integrate uh, social and emotional learning in, in my daily teaching and obviously picture books uh, became the solution for me. So today we will be exploring what is social, social and emotional learning um, and what what role you can play as a librarian in the student's development. We're gonna see how picture books are the perfect tools to, to do some social and emotional uh, teaching and practice and, and, and learning. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorite uh, books. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this is that your involvement in the student's social and emotional well-being uh, can really make a difference in their lives. And any small things you put out there for them will have an impact. It's the collective effort eh, that, that needs to occur uh, school-wide. So first, what is social and emotional learning? Um, this definition, this, we're going to change slides here. So what is social and emotional learning? Social emotional learning is the process through which children and adults understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships and makes pot responsible decision. This definition comes from 
Kessel. Kessel stands for the Collaborative and Academic Social and Emotional Learning. It's an organization that supports all the educators and the schools in the, in the states with um, to enhance social and emotional learning for students from pre-K to grade. 12. Um, the information is of high quality and uh, evidence-based information. Uh, so if you want to know more on social and emotional learning, I invite you to go see that website. Uh, they have amazing research articles and lots of tools that can be used in your schools. I use it all the time. We're going to go deeper into um, social emotional learning. What they did, Kazel, they broke up um, social and emotional learning into five key competencies. So the first one being uh, self-awareness, um, which is really identifying emotions in ourselves and how we see ourselves with our strengths and weaknesses and accepting those. Um, then they identified one as self-management. And uh, we focus on that one a lot at school. We, we, we do want children to be able to manage their emotions. So this is, really has to do with how we deal with our feelings and our self-views and what we do with them when they, they arise in our body. So, so how to cope with those situations and emotions. I would say that self-awareness and, and self-management is, if we put it in, a, in an order of a, a progression, these would come first. Um, then they identified social awareness as a key factor. This is really being aware of others and, and know that others have feelings and how to use and act uh, this knowledge uh, to build relationships interact with others and, and, and these competencies are obviously interrelated. We're gonna use all these competencies uh, and that knowledge uh, to make responsible decisions and to interact harmoniously with others. So those are the five key factors, um, but if you dig deeper into these, you're going to see that uh, there's all kinds of subcategories within each of these. Um, and I'm not going to go deeper in, in this with you, but if you're interested, uh, the Cassell website describes it very well. Um, we want students to apply these skills in class, right? If you see the, the circle uh, gets larger and we have these different um, environments where the kids are learning and applying these skills, they apply it at school, uh, in the classroom, at school, in their homes, and, and then in their society. Um, the learning stage in which uh, kids progress is they're going to acquire knowledge uh, and then they practice it, eh? They practice them and, and try to develop some fluency with those social emotional uh, skills. Uh, and we want them to eventually be able to generalize these skills in other situations on their own. They are lifelong skills and they are so crucial. Think of them. Um, Think of when COVID happened in, in March, all the emotions that we went through um, with all these changes in this, this new situation hit everyone. And I don't know about you, but I, my emotions were so mixed and confused. Uh, it, it wasn't easy. This is where a situation like this is when we need all these skills, all of our experience to be able to handle these emotions, make good decisions, and, and not rush to go get toilet paper, for example. Um, why are these skills so important for us and for you? This uh, represents the 
the program, uh, our school program. Um, on the very outside, you have all the uh, subject, the core subjects, eh? mathematics, ELA. Um, and, and if you go in the center, the, the student is at the center. So our program is really one in which the student is at the center of his learning. Uh, and those social and emotional skills are the first uh, first competencies to develop uh, within those students. And as the circle uh, widen up, so that's where we can uh, um, teach those academic skills. We know, for example, the, we have um, cross-curricular competencies, eh? like uh, uh, cooperating with uh, others and, and communicating appropriately. Uh, if we think of the pre-K, even the daycare program, the pre-K, the kindergarten program, those are all uh, social and emotional based competencies. We want that foundation to be very, very solid so that we can come on top and start teaching the math and, and English deeper thinking, critical thinking. And so if we don't do that, if we skip that step, it's going to be very difficult to teach some academic skills because the readiness is not going to be there. Um, all teachers across the province, I know, will tell you that it is crucial for us to, uh, to teach these skills. And it, the success of these students is based on their social emotional learning skills. Uh, it reflects in every situation of their life. Um, it's just sometimes teachers get to, there's so much to cover. So that's, that's why the important, it's become so important that collective effort to, um, to address these skills. So yeah, this is the thread that connects to all the programs. I'm gonna ask you to um, just uh, take your two hands and, and cross them over like that with one thumb on, on over the other. And so this is something you've probably done before and it feels totally natural. And now what I'm gonna ask you is just to change that thumb put the opposite thumb over the other thumb. And I don't know about you, the first time I tried it, it kind of felt awkward. It doesn't feel natural. So this is the first step, identifying um, the feeling of, hmm, this kind of feels awkward. Um, as you practice, you're going to get used to it. Um, and, and the longer you hold it like that, it's gonna get to feel better. So you're actually coping and adapting to this, this new situation. Um, maybe uh, tomorrow you could try it again, maybe next week you'll try it again and get used to this new feeling. Uh, so social and emotional skills, is, are a bit the same way. The first step is to identify uh, what's happening and, and to eventually adapt and get used to it and grow like the growth mindset too. So that new feeling, adaptation, uh, working on the long-term and persevering, growing uh, our mindset about it. By teaching these skills, uh, we're, we're helping the students identify their emotions uh, and coping with them with their own emotions, but also coping with different social situations um, in a way that is positive for all parties, eh? all members involved in the social situation. Um, there, we need to be teaching it in many ways, in many contexts, and by as many people as possible and offer opportunities to kids to apply these skills uh, where adults can, uh, we can just kind of facilitate and scaffold uh, their learning. So remember, it takes a village to raise a, a child. And uh, if everyone puts forward that effort, um, we can make a difference. In the next slide, I, I put, um, 
different layers of of how to promote social and emotional learning. Um, if we take, this is like a, a, an RTI pyramid for those who know what it is. Uh, the first two layers are really um, a layer, a, a layer in, in intervention that is for all students. And many students will acquire social and emotional skills in a natural nurturing environment where the relationships are positive and the environment is safe and comfortable where they feel cared for, cared for and the bond is strong. Um, many kids just with that uh, and, and the, the organization around it will grasp these skills. But we still do need, this needs to be a, a school strength, okay? That positive relationship and the, the the supportive environment um, should be our top, top priority for all members of the community uh, and, and it has to be very solid. Once that is set up, then we can actually start teaching social and emotional skills. Um, this is where we're going to really uh, use targeted lessons. Uh, we're going to use school programs such as Fluffy or Second Step, uh, do some ERC lessons. We're going to do some explicit teaching. For, for a few students um, that need, they, they sometimes need more practice. So Usually we say like 5% of, uh, of the school population uh, will need more practice. So some individualized intervention, one-on-one -on -one or small group or, or review the same skills they've seen as a group. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just dig into each of these um, sections. So the first one is... Um, building positive relationships with students, families, and colleagues in the library. So how can you um, make a difference in, in that layer of, uh, of the pyramid? So we know that no matter how good the curriculum is, how amazing the teacher is, how reputated the, the program is in the school, uh, policies are it doesn't matter um, it doesn't matter really until the child shows readiness eh? he needs to feel ready to absorb all these great output inputs and um, there's no real growth that's going to happen unless all the children feel uh, that every adult in the building believes that they can be successful so it's it's a team effort here um, a student will not give any importance to how much you know it, until they know how much you care. Um, that's a, a, a quote I used here. I liked it very much and it is very meaningful to me. Uh, I hope it is to you. So this collective effort uh, must include every adult in the school. So from the bus driver to the cafeteria lady to the office secretary to you guys uh, in the library. Uh, again, it takes a village to to raise a child and everyone with their own personal values uh, can play a role in the, the child's uh, social and emotional development. Here's how you can make a difference. Um, of obviously, um, these relationships will help the child feel safe uh, and he'll be receptive to learning and take risks and make significant effort. So that trust you want to create between you and the children and even you and the, the teachers um, uh, must be there. Uh, they must feel special to you um, and it will have a huge impact on their engagement, love of reading, social emotional skills, um, and, and so much more. So Build attachment, uh, try to become this significant adult uh, and inspire, I know you already do inspire a love of reading, uh, engagement, positive uh, self-awareness. Uh, you have the chance to be the home, school, child connection. So, so 
put it out there and use it uh, for for the best of all. Um, model these positive relationships. You know, smile. Ask them questions. Uh, go get their interest. Uh, it's if you make that little extra effort to build a relationship, uh, it 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 works. It makes them feel good, and and it has so much impact on so many things. The next layer here is um, the uh, creating a supportive environment in the library. Uh, so this is the idea of a safe place. So uh, every time I walk into a library, I just feel so zen. Um, and, and that's what you want kids to feel like when they walk in. It's a place where there is no judgment. Everyone is represented in a library. Um, you want the routines to be well established to avoid frustrations. Uh, so there's no surprise. Um, you, the kids and teachers and everyone knows that the guidelines are clear. Uh, oftentimes we see anxiety raising kids for for very simple triggers, a, a misunderstanding, uh, something that wasn't clear for the child, but the adult thought it was clear. So, and then the, the child gets di um, disorganized emotionally. Uh, I see that happen quite often. So, so this is to prevent this, a good way is just making sure that the routines are very, very clear and well-established. Create this calm and peaceful environment. And I've just suggested here, I've seen it in different places. I know in our school library, Miss O'Carroll got plants and, and we see them, they attract us and, and it helps. It's a connection to nature and it helps us feel calm. Uh, plants, uh, but a scent diffuser, um, um, then it could be just the space, the way the space is organized. A, you don't want it overloaded. You want things to be nice and spaced out. You can have a quiet corner there for, for some students who like to just be calm. You know, some, some kids feel comfortable and well on a soccer field or a basketball field, but some kids, it's their library. So it's a special place and we need to make it glow as much as we can. We want books to be promoted and displayed. Um, this has, uh, this is, is attractive for students and for teachers and it encourages uh, reading in Chris, it motivates them. So that display uh, must be thought of and, and explored. So I know it's not always easy with the space and the amount of books you have in your library, but sometimes we just have to try things out. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but uh, the display of books uh, uh, can be very use, uh, helpful um, to motivate students and teachers, even, um, yeah. So we want to make kids feel special and cared for, and we want to pay it, be attentive to their, their feelings and their needs. Eh? Uh, this is where you can really adapt your interventions according to each child. So let's think outside the box and uh, create this very zen, safe and calm environment. The next layer is uh, the teaching part of, um, of the pyramid. Uh, this is where a lot of the teaching is going to happen in class, the explicit and intentional teaching. So this is like clearly targeting a goal and teaching that specific goal. We need to remember that social and emotional learning skills are invisible. Um, so it can be very difficult for a child to grasp the concept of empathy, for example. So as much as possible, uh, we want to make it visual and teach it clearly uh, and, and use the proper words and, and not just assume that they will understand and read in between the line. So it has to be very clearly uh, named. Um, we need to help uh, students uh, 
um, apply these strategies. So we want to uh, organize teamwork opportunities where the kids will collaborate and cooperate in different ways. Role playing is an essential for social and emotional learning uh, from kindergarten to high school, uh, role-playing is the, on top of my priority list uh, for, for to, to teach as a teaching strategy for these concepts. I use it in different ways. I'll give you a few examples as we go on. So teach it in meaningful ways, in many ways as possible. Uh, for example, you know, uh, sharing, what does it mean? What does it look like? Sometimes we say, okay, guys, you have to share, but we assume they know what it is and what it means to share. So that's what I mean by explicit teaching. Uh, really, and, and this is a good place where you could do some role play. Um, another way you can... Uh, a way you can really have an impact is by challenging and inspiring teachers and families. Um, they can benefit from your knowledge of, uh, of picture books um, to engage them in rich conversations. You can, you can promote these books and offer them uh, these very specific books, telling them exactly what skills are in it and that's going to clearly help them and it's going to have an impact a deeper impact to I'm talking about it a bit later on so uh, use visuals role play and obviously uh, emotional literacy is something we'll see too um, this has to be addressed in the in the teaching part using games and songs is a great way we want to um, promote and reinforce any school-wide activities uh, and obviously use picture books. This is what we're heading towards. Uh, but before I'm going to just finish off the pyramid with that top part. So this top part is really uh, for very specific students. It's a, a few students only. Uh, this is where we all must go the extra mile. Uh, we need to make a conscious effort to, to reach these kids. Um, we can, we have to bond so deeply with these kids and, and it's difficult because sometimes these kids are, are difficult to bond with. They're closed to new relationships. So this, it makes it more difficult, more challenging for us, but it makes it more important for us to do so. Um, these uh, need social and emotional learning skills more than any other skills. Uh, so it poss it's possibly those kids who, who don't have those models at home or have very difficult family situations. Um, Oftentimes, it's sad to say, but it's our, our reluctant readers too. Um, so these kids are the ones we want to go reach uh, as much as we can. And, and as a librarian, I, I really do believe that you can help these children out. Um, one thing I, I would say is it's possible that many of these kids who need more intervention in, with their social emotional learning skills are the ones who don't bring back their books. So I, I feel like saying, let's think of ways um, to make, make it to help them out. To, um, so can the school pay? Uh, can we loan a book for them to keep in, in the classroom? Uh, can we email the parents with a picture of the cover book? Um, these are readers who need these experience. They need to be motivated in reading. And if they don't bring back their books for two months and they they lose out on like eight opportunities of, of reading and exploring a new book and discovering new things. So, so let's make an effort for those uh, kids. Um, I have a special attachment for these ones. Um, and, and I think together, again, we can make a difference. I have added a, a, a short video uh, to this um to this workshop, it's a it's a lady 
a teacher librarian, I think in the States, it's it's what they call them. Uh, they have a bit more time. And I even think the teachers don't accompany them in the library. Uh, but this teacher made a social and emotional learning a priority for her school year. Uh, and and it's, it, she, we'll see. I want you to just observe and listen. And I know it may not be possible for many of you to do like she does. It's just a way to inspire and um, and and if there's small things that you can take from it, well, that that's good. Uh, we we have to take one step at a time. Everything won't fit all at once. Remember, this is a cultural a culture piece and a philosophy that we want to keep in mind. The social emotional learning needs of students uh, has to be in our mind all the time. Maria Walters is um, an author, well, a teacher, uh, author of a book, and she's a passionate, uh, she's passionate about storybooks. And uh, I've purchased her book, and there's lots of good things in there. And I really like this quote where she says, a read out loud should be a joyful celebration for all, for you, your students, and indirectly for the author and illustrator who toiled over each word and every image that lies on and between the cover of the book. Um, it's quite inspiring. Uh, I think we are naturally wired for storybooks and there is no other place where the children um, are all at the same place. They're at the same level. Uh, there's no strugglers. Um, they, they are always all very attentive, uh, no matter their difficulties in math or writing or um, story time is my favorite part of the day. And I think for many kids, it's, it's, it is theirs too. Um, it's an easy, meaningful way to touch all the competencies involved in social and emotional learning. Um, and these many of the books can be read at different levels and understood, of course, at different levels too. Um, so that that same book will be seen in one way from a six-year-old and in another uh, from a 10 year old. So I wouldn't limit myself too much with the choice of books. Uh, I am sad that sometimes uh, picture books stop being read out loud after grade two. Um, so I give you this mission to encourage those teachers of the upper grades to continue reading picture books. And sometimes, you know, they just don't know what to read. Sometimes they, they just don't have the excellent with novels. They know a lot of novels. Uh, but picture books they might not have as many as much um, knowledge on so that's a place where you can uh, you can help out it's very important I'm going to talk a bit about the read out louds here uh, it's very important when you do the read out loud to clearly um, explain uh, the expectations again we make too many assumptions on on the fact that we think that students should know, but in for real, they need to be taught. To, expectations need to be clear, uh, clear. So I, I use body, mind, and heart as, um, as a key, as key features. Um, so a thinking brain, a feeling emotions, and our body obviously facing forward and all that. But this can reduce frustrations for, for yourself and for students if expectations are clear. You know, you want to also create this, this talk culture, um, when to ask a question, how to stay on topic, uh, when to raise your hand and how to raise your hand. Some, uh, some adults use uh, signals, uh, sign signals to have the kids interact or participate. Uh, that's a good way too. Um, I really, uh, I make it sure that students know not to ask a question towards the ending of a book. You know, we don't want that that part to be cut off because my kids, they know that's an important part. So that's, that's they, they'll wait at the end to start asking their, those questions. And we clearly mention the words, uh, the talk culture, how to, yes. Yeah, so, um, so expectations clear. Um, 
these are the reasons why I think, um, well, storytelling is so powerful. Um, we have, obviously, when we're reading out loud, we are creating this love of reading. This fosters success and confidence. And, and you know, reading also reduces stress. It's, it's a calming down strategy for some people. So we're actually giving them tools, more tools to in their toolbox. Um, we are modeling proficient reader strategies as we're reading out loud. So this means that um, it's we're as we're reading, we're, we're just showing them uh, what readers do, and and it has an impact on their academic skills. Really, we celebrate the with written word and the illustrations, uh, and and this all has to do with like author's crafts and the ideas and the means of expressions. Most importantly, we expand vocabulary. Uh, this is huge for social and emotional learning, and we'll see it a bit later in the presentation. We are building community. Eh? Uh, students uh, feel it is a privilege. It's a privileged moment. They all have together uh, sitting side by side, working on this common goal and, and having all these same emotions going on in the classroom, being entertained with no judgment. It uh, sparks conversations and, and it helps them to build on each other's topic and listen to each other. We can clearly teach empathy through picture books, um, understanding feelings uh, in characters, but also in peers as, as they connect to stories. Um, it opens windows of other wor worlds. Uh, we can let them imagine social situations uh, that they've never experienced before through just a simple storybook. And obviously, we are building a foundation for future learning. And reading is a key point in so many areas of the child's development. So emotional literacy. Emotional literacy is is. It's been well documented that uh, uh, the more emotion words a child knows, the more successful he or she will be, uh, not only academically, but socially and emotionally. Emotional, these vocabulary words become of high importance. It allows them to, it increases the, the, the child's ability to express uh, social and emotional needs. Um, so what it is, it's really uh, the ability uh, to express oneself's emotional state and communicate this feeling. So we know this, this is a key factor uh, in the child's development. So we are going to uh, dig into that and make it um, an essential when we're, we're reading to the kids. A, we, we, I have, um, I put up the slide, a list of vocabulary words, and there's so many, there's so much more than that. I just chose this list, but there's so many words that refer to uh, emotions. What I like to do with my students is um, I, I keep this poster with the four basic emotions, so happy, sad, scared, uh, and angry. And every time we come across a new word, a new emotion word, uh, the kids identify it and we put it up on our poster. We kind of sort these words. Okay, so cranky, where would that go? And then we have this this discussion about the word cranky, we put it with angry and the child is challenged to use it through the week. And, and, and we just try to make it something concrete uh, and, and alive also. Um, you guys as a librarians it can definitely promote social and emotion, uh, emotional literacy in the library. 
Uh, books are worth gold for these skills. How could we better identify these skills <laughs> except exposing them to um, books? Uh, social emotional, we could have a social emotional kids se book section or a uh, uh, one for teachers even. Uh, I don't know how we could display in a library those books, but I do feel that uh, they are, um, they, they, they could be uh, put out there and, and make, make them uh, visible and encourage students to see them. Uh, anything about feelings or uh, growth mindset or culture and diversity, uh, you might want to make sections specifically for these books. Um, we could, for example, in the library, put posters up and or photos of people expressing different emotions. We could even take pictures of students to uh, show, show these emotions and, and sort those emotions with kids' pictures from the school. We could ask a class to make a feeling book and that the students could read, read on site. Um, I have in my resource class, I have mirrors beside me all the time, uh, little Dollarama mirrors, and I put some on the board too. So the kids, when they walk out, there's a mirror there, sometimes they peek in it. Uh, so seeing their own expression is also contributing to that, uh, to the, that learning. It's important to talk about emotions, um, to label your own feelings and express them. Notice and label students' feeling uh, and use those vocabulary words. You, use, you can expose a vocabulary list, too, of emotion words. I had also a psychologist in our school would put a quote of the day on her door. Uh, it, always was linked to um, social, some social or emotional uh, uh, context. Um, and she put the author there. So every time we walked by her door, it was kind of neat to, to read that quote and get inspired. Um, role playing, I said it, I mentioned it earlier, how important it is. This is a great way to engage your students in open discussions. Uh, with your read alouds, you accompany it with role play. Um, I would say to you, step forward and get involved with your school-wide activities. What's happening in the school? I feel like sometimes librarians are a bit set apart. Uh, I would like to see this uh, put together um, and uh, so you can just inquire and make yourself aware of uh, what's happening in the school. Is there a character trait, a monthly character trait, for example, or, or some cultural events, or you could also follow uh, current affairs, you know, of cultural events, but school-wide themes and, and aligning those with the books you display and what you're promoting. So what's most important, remember it's a philosophy, efforts must occur daily. I had planned um, an interactive activity, but I'm gonna have to go and skip that. I hope uh, it's not, I'm, I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but I would love to get to those book sections. Um, so I'm just showing you a few tools and ideas to teach social emotional uh, pic with picture books. Um, these are things I use on a daily basis. Um, it's, it's, as I was saying, using visuals, making things concrete will help. Uh, we have to organize this abstract thinking with, with visuals. Um, it's a very abstract concept, all these skills. So we, we want to reinforce that learning and, and make it more concrete as much as possible. And, you know, like I have here, um, well, a speech bubble and a, a thought bubble uh, that I use during my read alouds. Um, and I ask the kids, let's say, what would you think that the character is thinking right now? And it's a bit of 
like a role playing, but with the, but you're just actually discussing. So, so I use these things to um, have the kids. Okay. So what do you think um, Jim Bar the is thinking right now? And, and so sometimes he'll take the stick and, and explain it um, stickers, post-its to stick in books sometimes just to display emotions or write notes and, um, and then I, I like to do uh, intensity of emotions too, um, just to show how one emotion can have different in intensity. And then I link that emotional literacy piece with the emotion vocabulary words with that context so they can actually um, draw a finer line between those different uh, feeling words. Now is the fun time. Um, I'm going to now uh, show you a few of my favorite books. Um, I, it was very difficult for me to select those books because there are so many, so many great books out there to teach social and emotional skills. But uh, I, I had to restrain myself. So I, I might go fast on some and longer on others, but I'll adapt with the time I have left. So the these are the five key factors of social and emotional learning. Uh, and I made sure that I chose some books for each of those five, uh, each of those five skills. Remember when we choose books, eh, uh, we're looking for very strong student connections uh, to people in their lives or, or even strangers. We want uh, titles that evoke strong feelings uh, and invite conversation. We want um, books that all the students will feel heard and all the hearts are shared and all the voices are welcomed. We want titles that celebrate diversity uh, and uh, we obviously always love uh, rich illustrations and rich vocabulary. Um, so I'll explain, I'll present these books and explain a bit of why I think it's such a good uh, choice. So the first one is on Monday when it rained. It's a, an old book. I don't remember what year, but it is an old book. It's one of my favorites. I use it every year. The the illustration, well, the pictures of this boy um, are very clear. Those facial clues are, are very clear and it's easy for students to, to practice identifying the emotions with these facial expressions. Um, I use it to, um, to uh, guess emotions with, through a social situation. So this book boy is living through different social situations. Uh, and and then he has an emotion. So it, it's a fun way to explore emotion with kids and, and see how they would feel in such a situation. This is where you might see some some gaps, you know, uh, where some kids read situations uh, not the right way, and and you need to prompt them and question them deeper to to. To, for, to get that child to understand that, uh, okay, well, maybe, no, maybe he is scared finally and not happy. So sometimes we assume that kids just know these feelings, uh, but they don't, they don't, they have to work on them. We need to teach them and reinforce it in as many uh, situations possible. The next book is, um, it's a new book uh, that I discovered this year. It's uh, called Sometimes I Feel Like a Fox. Um, so how would it be like to feel like a lion or like a, like a fox or a bear or a deer? Uh, this book has beautiful illustrations of children uh, wearing a mask of an animal and they explain uh, why they identify to a specific animal. The text is poem type text, uh, very short and brief, but uh, I, I like everything about this book. It, um, it's from a, a native uh, culture background and there's this explanation at the end too of how uh, students uh, are born uh, 
linked to an animal and the representation of that animal. So a bear is brave, a deer is loving, a butterfly is vulnerable. So how many kids don't know really what vulnerable means? Uh, this is, it gives us great opportunities to, to discuss these vocabulary words. I put here three books um, that uh, are in are the enjoyed by the younger kids, uh, and it's funny how young students can associate colors to emotions right away. Uh, but these books uh, refer they they show that clearly, like um, and it's simple text. Uh, the kids love them. Uh, the Glad Monster, Sad Monster is a die cut book. I, I believe you would know these books because they've been around. Uh, so I am not going to spend more time on them, but uh, they are must haves, must have in the library for younger students. So this is another one of my favorite. It's called In My Heart. This too are hearts that are cut. Uh, into the page. Uh, the text is beautiful. It really describes every uh, emotion uh, physically and, and emotionally. So there, the, the author has attached a, a situation to this, these feelings of happy, being brave and calm, mad, hopeful, afraid, silly, shy, in a way that is uh, very neat. Uh, I saw one of my colleagues this uh, last week do an activity where she had them paint their heart and express a feeling. And it was so neat to see those paintings and how they actually, we could actually guess or pretty much guess the feeling it showed in the painting with the lines and the colors they've used. It's a great book to recommend to teachers. Um, these are all uh, art-oriented books. Uh, Emily's Blue Period is linked to uh, Picasso's Blue Period. Uh, Nico Draws a Feeling uh, is a little boy who, who well, it says it, he, he's using uh, drawings to, uh, and so the drawings are associated to feelings. I believe you would know The Color Monster uh, and Beautiful Oops is another great book that the kids will, will loan and loan and loan forever. They just love those the feeling and, and the touching and the playful things inside. Um, so it, it's how to accept mistakes, but inside there's a whole bunch of textures and things to do with the book. Um, I like to use books like this and, and associate it to music or painting uh, to study the characters or talk about authors. Um, there's so many things you can do with these books. So here are some essentials uh, to be taught through picture books. Uh, we've talked about it, words. There are words for different feelings. Uh, emotional literacy is a key factor. We also need to think of um, teaching empathy and training our kids empathy. And it's a great way to do it through uh, picture books by showing empathy for the characters. Kids need to understand that feelings change. Sometimes there's a reason of why and how. And uh, if you dig into the storyline, you're going to figure out, or the, your kids, your students are going to figure out why the characters' feelings changed. Um, it's important for them to know that they can have different feelings from somebody else about the same thing. Um, this also can be discussed through picture books. You can have more than one feeling about something. So these mixed feelings, uh, and you can recognize someone else's emotions through their facial clues, body language, their tone of voice, um, and their situational clues. These can all be highlighted through picture books. And the uh, main message here is all feelings are valid, uh, but uh, they, are also, uh, they also have different intensities, and it's what you do with those feelings that count. So feelings, we cannot just prevent them and stop them. Uh, 
Horrible Bear is a very simple, uh, easy book with a, a storyline that clearly shows the change of the character's emotions. Uh, it also, the facial expressions are are well drawn uh, and the, the, the students are attracted to them. Uh, to this book. They'll reread it and reread it on their own. Um, we, I, I've had students draw a story line for this book on about the bear's emotions and the girl's emotion and how they change throughout the story. It was a, such a neat experience. Uh, I, I recommend this book high, greatly. This is an example of a, a storyline and how emotion changes throughout the story, um, but it's not the one with the, uh, the horrible bear. Hi, and Anjali, hi. I have to speed up here. I'm so sorry. I know that you have many more slides with wonderful books to show us. Um, the, the list of books that are in your presentation will be available on our QSLIN website, and we will make a blog post about it. Um, but I'm sorry we have to wrap up for lunch now. But yes, thank it's you okay. so much for taking part in our symposium and um, everyone, our next sessions will be starting at one o'clock. Uh, but as you can see, um, Anjali, you've got a wonderful list of suggestions there and it is up to us as librarians to promote and have these for teachers uh, at our schools. And I hope you can all take a look at the, that list. Thank you so much, Anjali. You're welcome. I'm very sorry. I didn't keep track properly. To me, I, I still had a few minutes, but I, I know, and I have so many things to say. I could have shown this for um, 30 minutes, but I'm going to let you go. Or maybe can I just You can highlight go through some of your slides really quick for a few seconds. Uh, yes. So Samuel, can you do that and, and uh, just go quickly through the slides? Okay. And next, I have so many things to share about these books. Thank you, Samuel. Um, yeah. Each Kindness is a beautiful book. This one here, Something Happened in Our Town, um, really strong, thought-provoking book. Um, yeah, they're all, all great books. Role play. Fly is amazing for teachers. Empathy needs to be taught. And here it was like suggestions for teachers, but go out and, and promote them, give offer them some books. The teachers, they want to, they want your expertise. They don't have enough time uh, to go through and find find those perfect books. Please address the specific needs of students, uh, anxiety or, or newcomers or, um, or kids with behavior problems. Uh, there's, there's so much that you can do um, as a professional. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you can make a, a difference. Uh, and, um, and, and thank you. I'm so sorry I, I ran out of time like that. Thank you, Anjali. <laughs> Bye.